she only allows one to go up to the next stage who passes her own tests and those tests are that he develops a high moral caliber i do not mean moral caliber in the sense of sex in which it is held at present sex is a natural appetite of man i mean moral caliber his love for fellow human beings his love for truth his uprightness his compassion his charity his selfless worth and other such virtues if i may create an image you are on the mountain top seeing far but down here is a spiritual aspirant who would like to get to the mountain top now you have you have said practice uh the virtues and morality of of your particular tradition what about however uh, the question of vegetarianism or methods to awaken kundalini meditational and otherwise what about um the 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 practice of various forms of yoga various systems would you recommend these to a person you see i would about vegetarianism i would not adopt a fanatical attitude i would leave the question of diet open to the co- candidate at this stage if animal food suits him and the climatic conditions of his country are such that this can serve better he can gladly use it if the vegetarian diet suits him or he prefers it he is welcome to take that diet provided it is complete that is it has milk and eggs and animal protein in any form available in it without the slaughter of an animal i would leave this question to the candidate himself also if he wishes to practice yoga then i would ask him to practice it according to the tradition that is according to the eight steps and the first two steps are what i have already said yama and nema worship prayer self control regularity compassion mercy love and absence of malice violence aggression and virtues of this type they are the first steps to yoga so he has first to gain perfection in them and then he can go on with asana and dharana and samadhi but if he likes to do all together he is even welcome to do that he can even practice meditation side by side with his other effort to raise himself in morals and ethics there is generally a reluctance to follow all the various limbs of yoga and only to snatch at meditation or pranayama or asana because people believe that these are the real things and with this they can reach the higher level of consciousness easily but that is not possible the whole cerebro spinal system has to be purified of poisons and greed malice immoderate ambition passion malignancy malevolence hatred aggression and violence create nerve poisons which will be a hindrance to any practice of yoga and would not allow the aspirant to reach the desired state he would just waste his time so it is necessary for him to attend to the other steps also another point is that the evolution of human beings is proceeding on a complete basis the will the imagination and the emotions all must evolve correspondingly it would not do to have an evolved imagination with a weak will 
Therefore, the first two limbs of yoga, yam and niyam, develop the will also, and that is an essential part of yoga discipline. So, the key words for you then would be moderation and balance. Moderation, balance, self-mastery, and then development of love. This is the most important quality. And also lessening of the ego. The man who believes that by doing yoga or following a certain discipline has become superior to others or is now in a better position than others is creating a barrier for himself which no amount of meditation can overcome. He is creating the barrier of the ego. Similarly, a vegetarian who thinks he is purer than a non-vegetarian is creating another barrier for himself. These barriers are not to be created. The mind has to be let open and free without fanaticism and dogma. I would like now to focus on the scientific aspects of your work. Would you please comment as specifically as possible on what you see as the special significance of Kundalini research on five major areas of human experience? One, what is the significance of Kundalini research for physics? Second, what is its significance for psychology and psychiatry? Third, religion. Next, education. And last of all, politics. Yes. So, let us first take physics. The research on Kundalini will of course, bring before the observers one in whom enlightenment has occurred. I mean the last stage. And in the state of enlightenment, the solid reality of the world vanishes. So, what the physicists are now encountering in the sub-nuclear depths of matter, the enlightened sees it as a reality. The solidity, the mass, the heaviness and the reality of the universe ceases. You can even verify it from the Indian tradition. It is repeatedly mentioned that all that we see, which we think as solid, as sound, or having mass, or having a velocity, is just a projection of consciousness. It is just a creation of consciousness. This is what the enlightened will say to the world, that all the universe that you see is the dream, is the projection, is the superimposition of a staggering consciousness that encompasses the whole universe. You are saying that ultimate reality is consciousness. Is consciousness. But a consciousness which human consciousness is not even able to imagine. In the enlightened state only a glimpse can be had of the sun, just a slightly better glimpse than in the normal consciousness, and even that glimpse is sufficient to show that there is a glorious and everlasting and unimaginable, incredible life, consciousness and intelligence behind the universe. And all that we see and hear and taste and smell is its creation. That would be the vision. You have mentioned the, the word prana as the, the yogic term for 
a new form of energy that science, especially physics, will have to direct its attention to. Uh, what are some of the characteristics of, of prana? What, what indications can you give for the observable and verifiable um, discovery of, of this, what at present I have to say is a hypothetical form of energy. Yes. You see, though it is uh, hypothetical, but it has at least the testimony of hundreds, even thousands of yogis for the last thousands of years. This prana is used from the Vedic times and thousands of sages who were who never spoke a word which was not the truth have testified to its existence. Now prana is something which is not possible to explain through human language. It is a super intelligence, almighty and all powerful substance, medium, and which is capable of creating any form of life and any object of the universe, even those which we cannot perceive by our senses. This is the substratum of the material universe. In other words, I would say that behind the university, in universe, there is an energy which is not even thought of by our physicists, which is in fact the real energy from which matter comes out. Prana is the substratum of the of material the universe, universe yes. from which the presently recognized four forms of energy, electricity, magnetism, gravity, and the nuclear energy, yes. come. This is the stuff from which creation is born. This is the energy of the Creator, the first energy of the Creator from which all is created. That is, prana. is, is physics approaching this through subatomic... It is coming nearer to it, definitely. It is coming nearer to it. And in the Sanskrit terminology, the generic name is Shakti, energy. And the generic name of cosmic consciousness is Shiva or Brahman. This is, Brahman is the consciousness which is the primordial cause of the universe, and Shakti is his energy by which the universe is brought into existence. What the future uh, research will reveal, I cannot say. I mean about the nature of Shakti. Maybe it's deeper nature or about its components or whatever it is. But so far as the mystical experience and the experience of yoga is concerned to this day, there is one cosmic consciousness which has the power of creation and that power is known as Shakti. We can call it Maya Shakti, the power of illusion, or Shakti or Prana Shakti. It is a mysterious power which may be behind what we call as the material energy, which may be even its source and its cause. 